Good morning. How are you today? This is Pastor Jim Cimbala in beautiful downtown Brooklyn. Palm trees, gentle flowing river water right outside the window here. Nothing like beautiful downtown Brooklyn. Only kidding. It is what it is, though. Uh, you know, the cultures differ from city to city, right? So I'm used to New York. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. And people here in New York can be rude, abrupt, not much of a social filter. They can be unfriendly, not everyone. And I was just, as you could see, I was just in Kentucky, where I got my hoodie, preaching to pastors and at a, a service in Kentucky at a church. Spent three hours with pastors and leaders. So while I was there, I was in Lexington, Kentucky. That's a whole other culture. Listen, I was as far away from downtown Brooklyn when you see huge farms where they just raise thoroughbred horses. I was on horse farms. You understand what I'm saying, horse farms? You don't see any horse farms around here. So I want to go to the hotel room and not go out to eat, but just get some fruit or something to tide me over. So I go into a Kroger's supermarket and I walk into it, a cultural experience, and a woman's there near the door as I walk in, shopping herself, didn't even work there. And she just looks at me and goes, hi, how are you today? And I'm going, what? I don't know you. In Brooklyn, people just don't out of anywhere smile and go, uh, hi, how are you? Beautiful though, that's nice. That's how people we ought to act. So we're reading Hebrews, we're in chapter three now. And Paul, uh, the writer uh, of Hebrews, is making a point now. He's already proven to these Jewish, let's re uh, remember this, Jewish Christians, probably the ones in, in the land of Israel and maybe north into Syria, who were thinking about going back to Judaism, maybe because of persecution or false teachers who were saying, no, the, the law is the way to go. And he's proving that Christ... And the new covenant has replaced the old covenant, replaced, gone, it's gone. No more Elijah, Moses, the mountain, Ten Commandments, Jesus, it's Jesus now. So he's proven that Christ is better than angels, greater than angels, because angels were involved in the giving of the law, which someone could make a big deal about and say, you know, when the law was given, angels were involved. <clears throat> in some way that's not actually specified. Now he wants to prove not only that Jesus is greater than angels, chapter 3 is not something m people are debating about today. So its relevance to us is not such, I think, of great importance. That Jesus is greater than Moses. Because Moses is a symbolic figure of the old covenant. <clears throat> so in chapter 3, he wants to tackle that, the writer, and on that way, verse 1, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters, who share in the heavenly calling, heavenly calling, from heaven, Jesus sent from heaven, and ending up in heaven. Not much mentioned in the Old Testament at all of heaven, any specific spending, uh, uh, being with the Lord forever and ever. So this is the new covenant now. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. That's still verse 1. Whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. We'll get to that. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. Did you know that most disturbances in our walk with the Lord is, is originates with a bad thought life? Fix your thoughts on Jesus, which means by the grace of God, we can fix our thoughts on something good, pure, holy. Philippians chapter 4. Whatsoever is beautiful, lovely, holy, uh, uh, of good report, noble. Think about these things, the writer says. And then he says, and the peace of God will continue in your life guarding your heart and your mind. So let's just look at that for a second <clears throat> because that's an important verse. Just read it the other day. It says here, 
Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, Philippians 4, verse 8, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And what? Whatever you have learned or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Now here in Hebrews, it's fix your thoughts on Jesus. So you can be a Christian, and if you think junk, negativity, condemnation, carnality, filthiness, hate, racist thoughts, bitter thoughts, unforgiving thoughts, guess what? You're going to be messed up. I'm going to be messed up. I'm going to get sideways. Why? Jesus is in our heart. We're Christians. But it automatically mean that we know how to think. I counsel people all the time. I know it from my own weaknesses. You can start thinking about stuff you shouldn't be thinking about. Come on, you know that. And we don't think so much about it. We just think, oh, with my heart, I worship the Lord. That's all important. With the heart, a person believes. But our mind is part of me and you. And Jesus wants to be Lord of our mind and Lord of our thoughts. And now the writer is saying, Fix, it's a command. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. Today, I challenge you in the name of the Lord. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. Not on the news. Turn off Fox News and CNN, please. Would you stop fixing your thoughts on that? What's going on in the world? Oh, that'll give you some turmoil. Fix your thoughts on Jesus. You know what that will mean? It'll be a constant reminder. He was nailed to the cross for me. On the cross, crucified, for me he died. He was nailed to the cross for me. That's an old song. You don't know that one. Heard that when I was little. You'll remember God's love. God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. You fix your thoughts, how did Jesus get here? God loves you so much and me, he sent his son for us. You think about Jesus, then the enemy can't get in and bring condemnation. Look what you did, look how you messed up. No, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left its crimson stain, he washed and made me white as snow, or something like that. How about it? Fix your mind on Jesus. Oh, no, but the enemy. No, listen, stop. And in the name of the Lord, think about Jesus. When we sign off here, just sit in that chair and think about Jesus for one minute. And let the Holy Spirit give you aspects of Jesus, his love, his greatness, his mercy. And guess what? His promise, I go to prepare a place for you. Not five-star, hotel, resort, property, heaven, forever. All because of Jesus. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.